Hello everybody and welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club. I'm your host Phoenix and today I have Jolene with me. Hello. Aren't you excited for this beautiful thing that we have in I'm front of us? I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Yeah. Hold up. Maybe actually, maybe I'm not ready. You're not ready? <laughs> it's Corazon though. How can you not be ready for Corazon? I can't remember what we said during the last time of, of this. I think when we spun the wheel and it landed on it, I think you were about to like shit yourself. You're like, yes, thank God, there is a gun <laughs> and everything. <laughs> but I'm excited. I didn't even see that you muted. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I, I had an interruption. <gasps> How dare you get interrupted during Wattpad Book Club? <laughs> I know, I know. No, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Me, even God was real. <laughs> Oh, but you were very excited when we landed on this, right? I was. I, I, yes, absolutely. I do. I, this is this is my favorite thing. This is your kingdom that we've come. Done so far. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited for it. This is yep, Corazon. We're on chapter ten. I don't know. Why I said I almost said eight. We're on chapter ten right now. <laughs> and oh shit, Jolene, what the fuck I'm do we remember nervous. from this? I so the deal with Duflamingo is happening very soon, and oh. Corazon's like, yo, and they're having an angst moment, because our character just it, it's self-destructive, you know? Yeah. Think, like, I'm better off alone, not better off alone, as in like the edgy way, but it's like, if I remember correctly, they're like, I don't want you to get involved, despite, you know, because these are things I have already settled, I gotta settle my life. Mm-hmm. And then he's like, I'm gonna be with you always. You've helped me. I I love you. You know? And it's like... Oh, yeah, ah! he did say he loved us. Good for him. <laughs> I cannot wait for it. It's gonna be so cute. These little guys are adorable and I love it. Alright, uh... We, oh, wait, I gotta get up. My coin is across the room! Do you have everything in play? Uh, I got it. I got on this beautiful quarter. Alright, do you want to be heads or tails to go first? I want to be tails, but have you already input our name and everything? Yeah, our name is Sylvia. Nice. Yep. Alright, you said tails? Yes. Alright. It's tails! Perfect! <laughs> You're like, finally! Yes! <laughs> <clears throat> Oh shoot, let me drink some water. <laughs> Don't dehydrate him. Apology. I am de I do am dehydrated. Everyone boo Jolene right now. <laughs> yeah, boo For boo. not boo, hydrating. Boo. Yeah. Boo me in the comment. <laughs> I'm kidding. We yeah. don't. Yeah, everyone's like, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> Rosanante starts laughing in happiness and hugs you tightly. Your heart clenches from the warm feeling in your chest, flowing through your nerves like honey. Gratitude for him being with you, his soul touching yours, for him existing. Corazon caresses your face. He's doing what to her? Closes your <laughs> caresses. Oh, he's caressing. <laughs> <laughs> Closes your eyes before pressing his forehead to yours, almost just exhaling the answer with his breath gently brushing your skin. I love you too. No one ever said these words to me this way. You feel tears leaving your eyes as you close the gap to kiss him, trying to show all the emo um, emotions running wild in your mind as your hands find his golden hair. He softens the movement of his lips, then leans back a little, scowling at your face. Why are you crying again? Something happened? You chuckle silently and leave a sweet smooch on the corner of his mouth. He smiles and turns his head to kiss your palm tenderly. <gasps> so romantic. <laughs> Just tears of happiness, you would say. Rosanante nods with a bright smile, so bright that I could light your thoughts and make your worries disappear. I promised him. One day without thinking about the future. Why did you decide to meet Sophie sooner, Sylvie? I forgot her name for some reason. <laughs> 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 I literally just said it. It's Sylvia. It's better be Jolene. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, me right now? Me when I write, read my own fanfiction? 
Uh, yeah, you and you frown a, you frown a second, sitting back on his lap. He has finished his part of our agreement, so I can be free. His eyes gleam in as he stands up, keeping you close to himself. I can't wait. He laughs and you suffocate your emotions to fall over his neck, breathing in a scent. You, me, and Law, traveling around the world. I'll always be with you. You smile and kiss his cheek, to light up his face again. At least this will be true. We'll be like a family, he whispers, hiding his face in your hair. You love to adopt broken people, don't you? You ask a bit sadly and wears an arcade frown. Don't ever say this again, he states, suddenly so serious. You think I just play hero to heal everyone I find? That's not what I meant, you murmur, and he lures, looking into your eyes deeply. In every kind of attachment with you and you have to feel the balance, he says. I try to help both of you as much as I could, because you saved me too. Law and you mean more than anything to me in this world, do you understand? You nod and push your cheek to his chest. And he starts walking on the coast towards the abandoned house you spent the time you spent the time in these days. I need to heal from too many things from my past. Too many things of my past, he whispers. And at the end of the day, people could only be healed by those they care about. I was blind, blinded to the responsibility for Duffy, being a marine for a man who raised me. But it doesn't matter at all. I just want to have a future for myself now. With the two of you. It's amazing, Rizanante. You smile. But what about your brother? He stops and you shiver as he holds you with a thrill running down his running down his spine. I'll do what I can, but I won't risk anything that could cause me to lose you. He says and accidentally trips. <laughs> <laughs> your dull fruit grows some branches on the ground to support him before he could fall. So, balance was not only rhetorical, I guess. He chuckled warm-heartedly. Maybe you're right, Rosanante. If you love me, then I can make you happy with the time I have. Oh, for the- yeah. Oh my god, that's so sad! <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we die, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Resident peace, Sylvia. We loved you. <laughs> If this book is angst with no happy ending, I'm gonna cry. Honestly, I'm just gonna stare blankly at the wall until, <laughs> until next time. Yeah, I'm gonna be like, Jolene, Jolene, are you good? And I'm just gonna hear silence. <laughs> yeah, the, the, call's, the call's not even gonna drop randomly. The ghost yeah. got to it. <laughs> I'll never forgive myself, but I have to leave Doffy to the Marines to handle. If I have to sacrifice to stay with you and find law, I will. Not like I can trust anyone in the Navy at this point. Aside from a few people. No, All of them are the hard Navy. to read. <laughs> yeah, fuck the Navy. Yeah, fuck the Navy. Uh, fuck the Navy. Like, our? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> now with the fear of Mitty, you mustn't contact the CPO to help me. You go, but don't react at her. You must be having a hard time now. He thinks you're dead, you whisper, with the, in the blonde side, trembling a bit. But thanks to you, I'm alive. Law is strong, and, and he's free. He'll be fine until we find him, says Florison, absent-mindedly stroking your hair. Then, traveling through the world together, you murmur, and the man nods with a slight smile. You close your eyes in his arms for a few seconds. This day is my present to you, Rosanate. I will be the one you deserve, not shadowed, not shadowed by future or past. And I will do what Duflamingo asked me to do, even if he talks about tomorrow. I won't let you see it. Law side. A tiny, lonely child sat at the entrance of a cave, shaking hard in his old body, soundlessly sobbing, leaves his throat, only whispering a name silently, over and over again. Khorasan. His tears dry hours ago. The rain stopped falling on this island, but the clouds stayed dark just like the ones in him. Coruscant, why did this happen to us? How could this happen? Why did you have to lie? You said he wouldn't kill you. You promised to me to fail the feed. Why does it have to hurt so bad every time? Being alone, losing them, 
Damn. My parents. Lammy, and now you too. <laughs> you damn. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp kid, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, stop womp womping people. You have terrible timing. That's yeah, supposed I... to be for something funny. I'm sorry. Sometimes humor's gotta cloud over the death going on right now. I don't think it's too fitting. I believe it is. <laughs> terrible, terrible. <laughs> Lop buries his face in his little hands, hiding the yellow eyes. He hopes that if he doesn't see the world, it won't be able to see him either. He received a gift of life without knowing who to open, how to open it. Poor son, I love you too. I love you too, and I couldn't say it ever. But his thoughts stop when crying sounds, while well, crying sounds from the edge of the town. Even if that ravine had torn apart all of his emotions, the little boy jumps up and starts running there. His eyes widen when he sees the sight, and he starts shouting. Let him go! Boy, don't hurt him! He yells at the three taller boys, standing around something uh, quivering on the ground. A teeny ball of white fur, crying in pain as the older kids see him. <laughs> yes! Best character. This this book is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> I, I love Beppo. <laughs> <laughs> Beppo just muttered, it's like, this is perfect. Yeah. What can you do against it? Grins one of the young men, and log rips his teeth. They leave the fur ball and step closer to him. Trafalgar Law may just be a child, but he doesn't withdraw. He deflates his little arm, getting ready to fight. And the biggest hits him on the face, sending him flying to the white creature whimpering in the mud. Lug growls and sits up, wiping away his tears. And then he looks to the side, he freezes. Two huge black eyes stare back at him, and suddenly a feeling spreads in his mind. That he never expected to face again. The will to protect the one. And the future surgeon of death stands up next to the ba polar bear baby, pulling out a knife from his belt. Oh, the breath playing adult, laughed one of the bullies, reaching for him. But Law, who doesn't even understand his devil fruit, but the strength from a new emotion he found. Radio knife, he shouts, and the other boy falls, coughing up blood, screaming in pain. The other two get scared and they recoil. Pulling their fainted friend away. A monster, they cry. And Law's attention isn't there anymore. He doesn't think about what happened. Doesn't realize his own power. Just crouches down next to the tiny polar bear who trembles and hides his face. And Law does a thing he's always learned with his family in White Town. You must be fine, but we have to bandage your legs, okay? It may be fractured, he asks, and the other starts crying again. Don't cry, I won't hurt you. Are you a doctor? Ah, oh, little baby. I love him. Ah, Beppo, Beppo, Beppo. Oh. Walk around for a second and bites his lip before he answers. I will be. The polar bear sits up and wipes away his tears, trying to pull himself together. Thank you for helping me. You're strong. What's your name? I'm Law. I'm Beppo. He says, swinging a bit as he sits. Why did those idiots hurt you? Asks Law, and examining the injured leg. For some reason, he doesn't even question that the other isn't human. His presence just feels natural in an inexplainable way. They hate me because I'm different, snuffs the bear, sobbing silently. Tachi and Penguin told me to stay in our home, but I wanted to see the island. Law frowns, and the little fist clenched in anger. He's free, but I won't let anyone hurt you again, he shouts angrily blushing from the sudden wave of emotion. Penny Bebo looks at the child a bit surprisedly, but then he chuckles and hugs him. And the hollow and lost soul fills a little as he hugs the polar bear back, lying his chubby cheek over the white fur. Maybe I won't be alone anymore. This is too wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> the little babies found it's each cute. other. They're gonna be besties. They're gonna be best friends and I love them so much. <laughs> Beppo, how can you meet a Beppo? Sylvia's point of view. You are sitting in Rosinante's embrace, back in the wooden house, reading the book of, of the tales together. He rests his chin over your head, and your heart beats with the same rhythm as his. The story is exactly like Hannah told you at the festival, about the fairy princess sitting in this town, visiting the town from town to time to see humans being happy. 
because even fairies can't understand the worth of mortality. And she learns about the love of humans, and she finds her prince to live with. And the book ends when she leaves the town, separating ways from the other fairies. Then, only the ripped away pages remain. I hate unfinished stories, you murmur, reaching that point. We can finish it together, Corson says and leans down to kiss your cheek. You shoot her from his touch and turn around to face him. Your heart misses a beat at the sight, and it makes him smile. You not only love him, you love the way he could love you. I wish we could be true. I wish we would be truly fairies, he whispers, lying with your side in his strong arms. You learn nothing from the tale, Sylvia? He chuckles and you frown. What do you mean? Even fairies learn about the beauty of love from humans, he says, looking in your eyes, holding you close. You start to believe that the warmth of his body reaches your mind, too. And I would never exchange this love for anything, Sylvia. I didn't understand that part perfectly, you admit, playing with his long fingers. Then, let me teach it to you. He murmurs against your lips, tasting your skin. You what? shiver and hug him. <laughs> My bad, sorry. I jumped the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you did, you're a little too soon. My bad. <laughs> you got your mind somewhere away. else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shiver and hug him, nestling into the wide, into the wide chest, hiding under the black feather coat. His left hand holds you by your waist. His right running into your hand. Your breath becomes ragged, ragged as he explodes your neck. Yo. Leaving metal. T- <laughs> look, <laughs> look now. Hey yo. <laughs> look now. Let's let's keep let us. Okay, okay, keep going. <laughs> I just think it's so funny. <laughs> I literally have lost all words. <laughs> Leaving gentle kisses over it as slightly as he can, you moan, consciously trying to be even closer to him. One day. Rosanante didn't even ask me about the deal. He trusts me so much, but he shouldn't. I have to protect him. I have to find a way to set him free, too. No matter Doflamingo and his promise to me. Rosanante's hand finds a way under your shirt and you stop thinking about anything else. Push away all the thoughts you have left. You just have to try to make place for the endless love you feel for him. Corazon leans back for a second, smiling at you. You shiver and catch his red lips again, asking for more. When you take a little breath, he talks again. Do you understand that value now, Sylvia? He yeah. asks, and you caress the blonde locks as kissing you. The pure love of humans is the most beautiful thing of the universe, not because it is formed by destiny or guided by care. It is our treasure due to the same reason as our life and happiness. And what is that reason? You whisper to his skin, making him smile again. That it's ephemeral. I thought I thought we were gonna read some fucking smut there for a second. <laughs> you did you, you didn't realize the thing? Wait, what thing? That it's ephemeral. Ephemeral's the name of the the book. You normally oh, do the thing when we read the title. I didn't even read. I fucked. <laughs> I fucked that up. My bad, guys. <laughs> Gonna get put down now. The earth. <laughs> Damn, old yeller. <laughs> Give me the gun. <laughs> Tell me about the rabbit, George. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> All right, Ch- chapter eleven. Do you think kids nowadays, when they're in high school, have to read um, *Mice and Men* or no? I mean, probably. Yeah. I always- I always picture, like, when I'm saying that quote, I'm wondering if anyone's out there like, What the hell are these people talking about? <laughs> you know? Ah, oh, I have a question before we start chapter 11. Yeah, what's up? Will we stop after this chapter and leave the last two for another time? Or will we try Wait to get Wait a minute, is well the... and... How about we see There's how all... much time we're at? Well, we're at 20 minutes okay. right now before we even start chapter 11. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> it depends on how f- brain dead I am. <laughs> All right. You smile at him and nestle into his chest, huddling yourself up so he can hug you even more. The red lips leave a kiss on your forehead with enough care it can make you shiver. <laughs> stop. What do you mean, stop? You're using that same voice you use when you do when you try to read What? No! That's crazy. 
Everything can only be truly dear to you if they if for fog and from infernal. You ephemeral. literally just said her said it ephemeral. E ephemeral. Ephemeral. Close enough. <laughs> you ass back, closing your eyes, drawing patterns on his skin with your fingers. If they last a. If they last for a tiny piece of time, they will mean more. The things they always have will always value less. You you silently nod, enjoying as he strokes your back. Your whole mind fills with love, a feeling that was hard to describe. It's a feeling of being perfectly complete, finding an emotion that completely mends all the hollows of the human soul. I would value you the same way forever, you murmur. He chuckles softly, kissing your cheek again. Suddenly, the, fa the fatigue of the day and the battle hits you, and he feels it. You can sleep if you need to, Sylvia, he whispers in your ear, throwing a little wood in the fireplace. You all too? First, I want to make sure your dream is calm, answers Rosadante, and you feel- and you leave a slow kiss on his lips. I can't express what I feel, but I can try. He keeps you there for a few more seconds before you lay back in his body, resting your face in the crook of his neck. No, I tried sleeping like that with Cameron. It's not very comfortable. <laughs> Just saying. Just a little food for thought. Because <laughs> like, you're just sleeping on bones. It's Bones are uncomfortable to sleep on. <laughs> your arms are I guess so. I wouldn't know. I, I genuinely would it's okay, Jolene. You'll get there someday. It's all good. I don't know if I want to be there, but... Okay. okay. <laughs> his arms are the safest place that you've ever been in. Whenever I close my eyes, I see you smiling. He mutters in your ear and you shiver. It's so beautiful. Man, he's got Riz. He's rizzing us up right now while we're trying to go to bed. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you look at him, resting your chin on his chest. But the real one is even more beautiful, he says, and you smile, making him laugh. Dude, dude he's rizzing us! Alright. <laughs> the starlight palely enters through the window. The fire slowly dies out, but neither of you care, feeling the warmth of each other. Rosadante? Hmm? Do you think you will- Do you think you will always see my smile, no matter where we are? He asks. You ask and he nods, pulling you closer. Forever. He, an he whispers, the amber eyes glowing, uh, gleaming softly. A bit cheesy, but maybe it's what you needed now. You place a kiss on his sharp jawline. He's got like that. He's doing it. He has a mewing streak going on right now. Stop. Leave that <laughs> man alone. <laughs> and I'll sleep with this one word orbiting your mind. Forever. The next morning I we die. I thought you were going to change it to Hmm? I thought you were going to change it from, like, forever to Riz, because you keep <laughs> talking about it. Dude, he was rizzing us up! You can't tell me he wasn't. I cannot confirm or deny anything. Okay, bro. <laughs> Morning! <laughs> you woke up to the rays of sunshine reaching your face. You yawn and sit up, realizing that you are wrapped in a huge coat protectively. You giggle and hide your face in it, inhaling his scent, the black feathers tickling your skin gently. Good morning, Sylvia. Corazon smiles, stirring something in a pan. You sniff, trying to figure out what it is. He lightens up the fire again, surprisingly, not without burning up the whole house in the process. The flames dance beautifully, embracing his figure with the bright, warm colors. <laughs> Good morning, you answer, stretching yourself a bit before walking closer to him. You didn't even notice the little flowers growing from your footsteps. You didn't use your powers on purpose. They bloom because you see him. Oh, that's a bro. That's so cute. Oh my god. <laughs> he made you believe that you are worth existing. Tiny, it, uh, ephemeral, ephemeral, beautiful things. <laughs> Rosadante smiles as the we at the we at the we plants. I don't know why I couldn't say we. It's literally a, okay. Anyway. <laughs> But doesn't point them out. You f find a place by his side and hide in the coat again. 
You're making breakfast? You ask. And the blonde nods in agreement, stirring the pan a bit faster. I wanted it to be a surprise for when you wake up. He smiles sweetly. Just a little salt and it'll be... And then it explodes. <laughs> I'm like, he doesn't know how to cook. <laughs> Corazon's jaw drops and his hair starts smoking. You laugh at his terrified face and take the pan and put it away. Yeah, put it away. You can't identify the, f the food... What the food want to be... What? <laughs> the food want to be from the remnants, but maybe you were never meant to understand. I'm a disaster, he whines, wiping his face clean from the dust, accidentally smudging his lipstick with it. You lean closer and caress his face, leaving a gentle kiss in the corner of his mouth. Rosadante blushes, pouting while... Flying slightly while... Well, fuck. <laughs> pouting slightly while... One... Wandering the wandering. Am okay, I can do this. Wandering the amber eyes to the ceiling. You're perfect. You smile, and he turns even even redder. The way you are. Oh, that's this is cheesy as fuck. When is when is Sylvia gonna die? <laughs> don't leave her alone. <laughs> Let her live. I don't think she's gonna live, though. <laughs> Look, I can dream. That dream's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> Oh well, you know, at least it was a satisfying one. Yeah. Corazon chuckles and hugs you. Comes a leaf falling back to the wall. You laugh at him and kiss him, driving his thoughts away from the failed sizzling? Yeah, si si sizzling. Sizzling breakfast. <laughs> you, you lie above his chest with your back, pulling his hand over your waist. His heart still beats fast, so close to your ear. Can't we just... Wait like this a bit more, he asks, while you s move slightly to leave. You smile and crawl even closer to his body. He covers both of you with his coat, tenderly stroking your neck. You huddle up to his arms. Neither of you talk for long minutes, just enjoying the nearness of each other in silence. Only when you feel his breath calm again, you leave his embrace. He sighs and pulls up his leg, turning into a huge black feather orb. <laughs> Maybe I, maybe I should be the one to cook breakfast. You smile and he laughs. I wouldn't like to kill both of us with some fried eggs. He chuckles a bit, embarrassed with that special one-sided smile. It was just fried egg? Wanted to be? <laughs> you laugh and see two more flowers growing on the, on the ground on their own. As you heal, they grow. That's so cool. <laughs> I love our little you were fruit. Just, you were just right at the beginning of this. You were ragging on our on our devil fruit. I was on our ability. I mean, I, to be fair, I was, and I still am. But this is cool. <laughs> I can make fun of things and enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you never had a- you never loved a piece of media so much that you rag on it, but also enjoy it. Not in the same way you do. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> when you heal your leg, I told you this place will look like a meadow sooner or later. He smiles sweetly, and you feel a tug at your heartstring from his voice. It's the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. You blush and lean down and kiss him for a second. <laughs> Just a second. Bitch. I'm almost sad about leaving this house behind. He continues, and you frown. But we'll find a beautiful house somewhere. Safe for both you and Law. It's almost like a family. Right. We can't stay here for long. You take a deep breath and leave his side, going to the window to look out. The snow melted, and the first signs of spring started to spread. A few little plants. Some brighter rays of sunshine. How much time can we have left? Rosadante, you can- you have to promise me something. You turn to him and he skulls as he sees the change in your face. What do you mean? When I met Doflamingo, you mustn't come with me, you say, pushing all your emotions behind. A way of pain runs through his features. Don't let him see it. Don't even think I'll let you go there alone, Sylvia. You don't know a thing about Dofi. 
I know everything I must. This is why I chose him? No! <laughs> we're gonna die. We're gonna- we're gonna die. I don't wanna die! <laughs> we, we must live! We must live! So, let me manifest. I know it's already written, but let me- <laughs> You gotta let manifest the ending. <laughs> yeah, I'm manifesting, despite the fact that it's already written. Rosie, please, you shout, trembling slightly. I didn't ask you anything. You kept the- I didn't ask you anything. You kept a secret from me, and then you come with this? He yelled and you shiver, but not recoil. I told you back then that if you get attached to me, you'll get hurt, you said. Don't make, don't make me see it. Your brother mustn't hurt you, and, but he will if you come with me. I don't care what you think about this. I can't leave you alone, he hisses with both sadness and anger in his voice. You still don't understand. Why can't you just tell me the truth? I deserve it. You feel the mist growing again and sit down on the floor. Scroll real quick. Rosadante crouches opposite you, worried, cupping your face. You have to trust me, Sylvia. Please, what was this deal about? Why can't we just go? I warned him so many times. You start crying and shaking your head. You knew you will have to tell him once, but you'll, you were still not prepared. You were so not ready. Not ready to lose him. Just give us this one day, you whisper, and he shivers, wiping away your tears. When you shake, he hugs you t gently. I'm sorry, but I can't. I have to know what's going on. I'm not a puppet in your game, Sylvia. Damn. Damn! That was... <laughs> Why are you being mean to us? <laughs> Go back to the last chapter when we're all happy and shit. I want to go back to look, that. Look, look, <laughs> It said one day. He says, and you start sobbing, pushing the sides of your head. I don't want to hurt you. You're hurting me now. You frown and hide your face. He's right. Why can't I just be strong enough to do what I have to do? I promised myself to set him free. And he will only let me go there alone if he knows the truth. You free from his arms and step away. You still feel his worth on your skin. He doesn't follow you, but the mist only grows as you see the pain in his eyes. You make your mind you make your mind empty as every time in the past when you were forced to do something terrible. And you start to speak, trying to stand the weight of the amber gaze leaving leaves on your chest. I told Dolphamingo so in my past when we met, you whisper, clenching your fists to stop them shaking. Rosadante's eyes widen, and you close yours to not see his face. We made, we made a deal, because I was the one who wanted it. I did something for him. Saved the life of a man. The most pure soul I've ever met. Yet, I don't know... I didn't know this at the time. In exchange, to save the world from the weapon I meant to be. A lot... A lasting... A last lone tear falls on her skin. You have to kill me to no! <laughs> We're gonna die. No. I fucking knew it. We're shut gonna... up. Just shut We're up. We're gonna die. What are you... <laughs> ah, no, please. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Everything is fine. Nothing, nothing goes wrong, and nothing can go wrong. wrong. Oh no, it all went wrong. <laughs> Don't forget the second half of that quote. But anyway. <laughs> Are you ready? Because I'm not ready. Oh, are we continuing? Yeah, we're only like 34 minutes into this. I was just saying it, I was just saying it. We're all good. And that ain't good. Our son trembles and falls back when he hears it. You feel your breath getting stuck in your lungs, the guilt choking you. But it comes worse when he starts crying. You know what, the whole time long, this is why you were scared of being with me? I didn't want to hurt you, you remember. Fighting to stop your tears. I should have left that first night. I don't know why. I, I came back. I'm sorry. Don't say sorry. He shouts at you and catches your hand. I'm glad you did. Just don't leave me. Please don't do this. It makes no sense. You rip your arms free and he falls back. Amber eyes vividly fixed on your face. He said you'll be free when you close the deal. He whispers with a shaking voice and you bite your lips. I will be. You answer and crouch down opposite him. Try to understand, Rosanante. My whole existence is a risk to the world. If I die, I can finally get rid of it. I'm done living in fear when 
when they will find you and use me again until I lose myself. Your existence is the best thing that's happened to me, he shouts, hugging you tightly. You can't stop it anymore and start crying too, your tears drenching his shirt. You lean back and stroke his face. I've lived enough thanks to you, you say, and he shakes his head frenet frenetic frenetically, trying to stop sobbing. But now that my father even found the serum, I have no time left. I won't go back to that hell. If Mihal came to warn me, he understands how dangerous it would be. I won't let the govern government make a weapon of me. In the past, I was only terrified of it, of the pain I would, it would have and cause. But this changed because of you. He kissed his cheek gently. This decision is now what the real me would do, to protect everything important. I don't understand, he cries, and your heart breaks. Why now? Why like this? Because I can't die as easily as others. You whisper and sit back, hugging your legs. Being next to him is so crucifying now. You grow a wooden spear from the ground and strengthen it with hockey. Rosanite yells at you fairly when you step towards your neck, but an arm start stops it just before it could reach your skin. Your muscles tense as you force them, but the spear doesn't move. You grit your teeth and throw it away. Corazon recoils with a terrified face. My father made sure not to let me escape, you say silently. I could injure myself minorly, but I can't do anything that threatens my life. Due to his modification, my devil fruit protects me. Not from pain, but from death. I dodge bullets and block attacks with, without my own will. Nobody could kill me, and those who could one didn't agree with it. Didn't agree to do it until I met Duflamingo. You follow your eyes and stay silent for a few seconds, trying to get rid of the black hole, sucking away your words. He's cruel enough to kill me without guilt, as if I give him something in exchange. Also, his power is perfect for this role. The strings can rule my body, and he won't be able to defend me. While well, he has stronger hockey too. I won't let it happen, he shouts angrily and you tumble. This isn't your decision, but you have to live. You answer. Stay inside the house and search the law. Your brother's gone. You want me to sit still while you're going there alone? To die? He cried. He healed me and I broke him. Duflamingo was right. I am the one who hurts him the most. You have to do it for law. He needs you, you whisper. You have to let me do it. He shakes his head and picks you up. We're leaving. Now, he growls, and you shout, jumping back to the ground. He looks at you with widened eyes. The sky roars and it starts raining outside. We still have a few hours together. You stay silently and hug him. I can't do this. I can't pretend that everything is fine. He cries and you quickly step closer, kissing him gently. His skin is wet from the tears and he closes and he and he brings you closer to his body, trying to convince you without words. Forgive me. You've left me no choice. It was too fast. Branches grow up from the ground and tie him down strictly like chains. You shake and end the kiss when he notices them. Sylvia? He shouts scaredly, trying to free himself. You wipe away your tears and caress his face. The branches grow stronger around him, big enough to stop his moving. I didn't want it this way, you whisper to his lips, where your double fruit touches the skin. It spreads flowers. If anyone... You have to understand, after I died, the branches will disappear. Wait some time here, then run away and don't look back. Leave one last kiss on his mouth. Your tears flows onto his skin. Man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm done. It's okay. I can't you do can... this, Jolie. <laughs> I can do this, but you can do this. Okay. Rosanante can't even answer. Pure fear and worry ra radiate from his eyes. You did it for Law to save him, you say. Let me do it for you. Don't do this, he sobs, tensing against the shackles. You push your forehead to his. I told you this would happen. I warned you about getting hurt. But you didn't listen to me. Our time was ephemeral, as you would say, you whisper. And it meant the world for me. Thank you. Sylvia! And your double fruit goes, ah, goes around his mouth too, so he can't speak. You tremble and look into the amber eyes again, trying to suffocate your crying. He's yelling and trying to set himself free to save you. Excuse me a moment. Are you, are you gonna wait? Are... Nope, I have an interruption. I'm gonna have a stroke. 
stupid. I, 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 bro, this is why I don't like green eggs, bro. This is so fucking sad. And I know what- I feel like I know what's just gonna happen next chapter. Dofi's gonna see us and then string string us and fucking, you know? I get for- I get for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. After you leave the house, you hear his muffled scream full of pain. You shake, losing all the power left in your blind. Everything becomes empty and dark, like falling into the ocean at night. The room flows down on your body, and you try to stop a mist of thirst growing. I can't lose my now. I can't lose myself now. I'm sorry, but I won't keep running for the rest of my life, waiting for those monsters to find me. You wanted to see the real me, Rosanante, and the real me would do anything to protect you. You gave some value to my life. You rummage in your pocket to find the dent and mushy. Well, going to the field where you first met him. I'm sorry. You're sitting cross-legged on the ground, raising your face to the sky to enjoy the raindrops meeting your skin. With him, you learn to en how to enjoy silence. Until it breaks. Let me guess why you invited me sooner. Sounds a deep voice from your left and you shiver. Turning there, Duflamingo smirks, tilting his head. His hair falls to his forehead from the water. You told him the truth. You nod and stand up opposite the huge man. By the way, I don't appreciate the little chat you you forced me to have with Mihawk. He continues and your eyes widen. Luckily, I get off through everything with him. Mihawk met you? He scowled. So Rosie sent him, huh? He chuckled. Not like it had any use. What did he, what did he say? You ask with a quivering voice. I did not tell him every detail, of course. He throws the pirate, but he accepted whatever it comes whatever comes of your decision. Right. What did I expect anyway? It's easier this way. What would he try to save mean if he didn't try him back then? Just look and finish this, he whisper, looking in his eyes. Resident Tate left the island after I told him the truth. Couldn't forgive me. I hope this will be enough. But you frown when the man starts laughing. Sylvia, I know him better than you, grins Duflamingo. He wouldn't leave you like this. You think I'd let you stay for days and give you time to prepare? You were the chain that held my brother at this place. He'll show up soon, I suppose. You shiver. I have to stay calm. Rosie is tied up in the house. If he doesn't come here, it'll be fine. The blonde man rolls his eyes inside. It's not your business, after all, so it doesn't matter. He says, deflating his left arm. Parasite. You grit your teeth as the, as the strings take over your body. Only your head can move. Duplamingo pulls you up in the air and you shake when his smile disappears. You are brave enough not to withdraw. I appreciate it. Strings are gun. Gun, you whisper, lifting your eyes and he aims it on you. Say hi to my mother in the other world. Grins the man and you tremble. You think back to Rosinante and the peace rules your thoughts. You recall his sweet smile and... Death is filled with love. You don't mind dying if you could save him. But you aren't given this last moment. You hear a voice coming from your side and it makes your breath stop. <sighs> <laughs> We're just both gonna die. <laughs> no, no. There is no death for me. Why? Doffy, let her go, he yells. Running as fast as he can, trying not to trip and not to start crying. Do Flamingo and the woman turn to him. Please, please no. Why couldn't I free myself sooner? Why can't I be stronger? Sylvia, he shouts desperately. But when he sees a smirk on his brother's lips, he freezes down. Rosinante falls to his knees and starts yelling in pain the second he, she closes her eyes and smiles at him for a second. Time stops in his mind when the pirate pulls the trigger. Her dull fruit grows a small wall of branches to stop the bullet. But Duflamingo's hockey is stronger, and they can't... Just like she planned. The gunshot echoes in the rain, and the blood splash from her chest before the corpse falls into the mud. Corso screams and runs closer, but his body stops moving a few inches from her. Duflamingo runs his fingers through his wet hair, and pulling the other men away. So we meet again, foolish little brother. He smiles gently. I have to help her. I told her not to let you see it, shrugs Doffy. 
turned around to start his way towards the sea. I hope you're ready to spend the rest of your life in prison. But Corazon doesn't hear him. He's tensing against the strings, even if it's impossible to escape. Sylvia. Why didn't I understand sooner? So many little things you said, and I couldn't connect the pieces of what will happen. This is my fault. You should have left her and searched for law instead, grinned Dual Flamingo. Poor little girl was sentenced to death from the second she was born to be the daughter of that man. Rosanante trembles and stops fighting, his tears mixing with the raindrops. But she was strong enough for this decision and stuck by it, says the pirate, turning around for a second to caress his brother's cheek. You'll stick by your own choices too while I watch, while watching how I take over Jess Rosa, because you chose love over duty. Corazon starts crying as the distance grows between him and her body. Du Flamingo glances at him for a second and sighs. I almost feel sorry for you, Rosie. He wonders. If I wouldn't be the monster you believe I am, the monster she needed. And Rosanante starts yelling again with the hope that somewhere she could hear him too. I mean, she could still hear him. I love you. Thirteen years time skip. Yeah, we're fucking dead, bro. <laughs> We're not dead! What do you mean we're not dead? We just got shot! <laughs> we got shot! But the hockey from the freaking thing! It said that our hockey wasn't strong enough and we- It said ah! the hockey from our power! Oh my fucking- I, Look, 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 look. It, the, our, our power prevents us from dying. I guarantee you we're alive. Anyway- I'm going to kill you if we're dead. <laughs> Alright. Chapter 13, Rosadante's POV. I guess the final chapter of this. Uh. Thirteen years pass fast when you're locked in a dark cell with almost no visitors. But Corazon tried to keep his sanity, believing in some miracle that would happen in his future to free him. He usually used his ability to create silence. He didn't get sea stone chained since his brother didn't know about his devil fruit. And he preferred to sit in darkness because this way, he could remember her face clearly. Rosadante heard her laughing, saw her smile, recalled the warmth of her body. He spent time every day to refresh all of his treasured memories of the day of the time that they spent together. He's scared of losing anything because forgetting things is evil. Sneaking into your mind and sealing important parts of your soul without leaving a trace. Until once you woke up and realized how little left how little you have left. Rosadante couldn't let this happen. He was the only one who truly saw fragments of who she was. He often thought about Law, too, trying to keep everything through the years of the Dark Cell. He was also mad at Mihawk because he didn't do anything to save her. Her death was her decision, but she didn't deserve to live. But she deserved to live. My bad. I almost said she almost. She didn't deserve yeah, she didn't deserve to live. What's wrong with you? I just, I read it wrong. But she deserved to live. <laughs> Corazon only received food, water, some books, and cigarettes a few times. But then some, and then the day came when Doflamingo lost to, lost to dress Rosa, and the prisoners were set free. What can a man do with freedom after so much loneliness? At first, he didn't know the answer. But after he could, but after he could reunite with Law, suddenly his life found meaning again. And still, something was missing. It took some. It took him some quite a fuck. It took him quite a long time to decide to to decide to fill that whole hollow fuck. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> do you need help? No, I'm having a stroke. Apparently, I, can... I think. <laughs> fuck. Uh, I... how did fuck did you pronounce the first name? Don Quixote. Don Quixote Rosadante returned to the island where he met and lost a woman he See, I told you we were dead! <laughs> keep going. I swear to fuck, if we pull out and we're like, Yay, bitch! No, just keep reading! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fight you. I swear, it's on fight! <laughs> it was harder than he imagined. Going through the same lines of the of the coast until he reached the one field where two sacrifices happened, only one completed. The world would never know why Sylvia died, as this place lost evidence of it too. 
The grass grew out where they stood. Plants and flowers covered the dust where her corpse laid. <sighs> In the way, it's beautiful. Horizon sits down around the place and lights up a cigarette, blowing out some smoke. A second later, he starts cursing and rolling out on the floor to put it out. <laughs> oh, he starts cursing and rolling on the floor to put out the fire and go. Okay. <laughs> but this wasn't the most dangerous threat this time. As he screams loudly, as he screams scaredly when something meows with pure aggression under him, the blonde man jumps up with wide eyes and notices a huge ancient red cat on the ground who hisses at him pissily. Don't tell me. Uh <laughs> Dirchenwald. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> the cat bristles its fur and claws in the air in front of him. So it's you, sighs Rosinante. Don't expect to- I didn't expect to meet you again, after you disappeared into thin air. Baldi meows sassily and turns around. Corazon watches it leave towards the forest and he strokes the grass one last time and then wipes a tear. Maybe it's time for me to go too. I just wanted to see this place one last time, to say a proper goodbye to her. My memories will stay, Sylvia. We'll meet again in the other world. See, I fu I'm gonna fucking kill myself. Rosadante screams frighteningly when a red ball uh, arrives from his left, clawing his face. Molly stops on his lap and the man hisses. Pushing his palm to his bleeding cheek. You're an awful therapy cat, you know. The animal almost shrugs and licks its paw, running into the forest again. But it looks back, meowing angrily for the, bl for the blunt who scolds. That direction is towards the house. Our house. I don't want to go there, shouts the man. His hand shakes. I don't want to see that place without her. But then the old cat hisses at him again and claws the air as a warning. The man hurries after it with a slight blush. He's ashamed to admit it, but he fears the red pet more than any enemy he faces in his life! <laughs> <laughs> the cat is cute. <laughs> and while he truly leads him to the house where they lived, when Rosadante sees it, he frowns for a second. It was only a ruin. It's not only a ruin anymore. Renovated, walls painted, a garden full of plants. In the white door, a silhouette of a woman appears, and his heart skips a beat. Are you- wait a minute! This- I swear no, to- No, no, no. Fuck! Just keep thinking. Just keep thinking. Just keep reading. Just read. I'm trying to read! <laughs> You're thinking. You're thinking too hard. I'm, I'm thinking really good right now. My brain is so big. It can't be. But he almost collapsed when she comes out to the sunshine. Not- oh, thank god. Not her. Why did I even hope? I'm insane. And even more surprisingly, the young woman laughs when she sees him and runs there, jumping onto his- wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Rosante shouts and trips. Both of them fall on the ground. She chuckles and catches the red cat, which purrs and nestles in her arms. You're late, giggles the woman, standing up. Uh, I- I don't understand, murmurs Corazon, red as crimson. You don't recognize me? She smiles and sets back. Or should I give you a blue flower instead? Oh, it's, it's the girl from the fort. Okay, okay, I can live with this. <laughs> Hannah? Oh, Hannah? Uh, you're the little girl from the festival. She asks Rosie, and the woman laughs, swirling in the air. I grew up, huh? Thanks for finding my cat. She's always on her way since... She was always on her way since she was a kitten. Your cat? She? Right, she. Answers the girl, lifting a brow. You thought she was a boy or what? N never mind. But anyway, you're late. Smirks Hana, sitting opposite the man. The festival ended a week ago, and she didn't come. Sylvia is dead, whispers Rosadante, hiding his eyes. She was never a fairy, and you must know that by now. Liar! What? If she's dead, how do you explain this? Grins the girl, picking something that was hidden under her dress. And Rosadante's heart almost stops as he recognizes the what? 
the Nenefar. The Nenefar with silver and gold pet. How the fuck did we live that? There's no shot. This. I there's, told you! There's no shot was, that we live! Look, 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 look. I look. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> the operator! Hey! <laughs> <Okay. laughs> you bubble dog! You're gonna well, fight I'm me. I'm telling you, because he offered her. Hey, do you want the gun or do you want like the strings? And she was like, the gun. And I was really confused in that moment. I thought she wanted to die, but then I was like, oh my god, she doesn't want to die, and this is her plan to live. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Two anyway, years ago, it. Zoro's side. These damn corridors just keep moving on their own. I'm gonna drag. He huffs angrily, kicking in the next door of Mihawk's castle. Perona, I'll murder you if I. If I find my swords again, but he stops if you when hide he's... my sword. Hmm? It says if you hide my swords again. Oh. I'll murder you if you hide my swords again. But he stops when he sees the room. And the pink-haired woman flies through the walls boredly and through his body. Ew! Protests the, the swordsman, jumping away. What the hell are you doing, idiot? I nearly drew you a map! Oh, I even drew you a map! That was mistaken, okay? You're no fun, whines Perona, flying around the place until she sees the room where Zoro stopped. What is this place? Don't know. Isn't this where you hide my st Isn't this where you hide my stuff? I would know it then, screeches the woman in the, the green hat, barely avoids a ghost almost hitting him. It looks like a forest. He r he rumbles and steps inside. But I see books on the walls. Joins Perona, following him. Maybe a library? I would clean it in the moment if I had my katanas here. M murmurs Zoro, trying to make his way through the branches and flowers running around the place. If you could walk in a straight line, you would have them by now. I literally place him in the room, in the room you stay- in the next room you're staying in, god damn, Zora. Damn, this guy is not really brilliant in <laughs> directions. <laughs> Don't fool around, yells Zora angrily, turning bright red. And then they reach the middle of the room. They fr they suddenly freeze down. A deep, calm voice- Sounds from behind them. This room is locked, says Mihawk, stepping closer to them. This savage kicked the door. Who are you calling sap? Enough, shouts the black-haired man, and they shiver. Don't interrupt the, the peace of this place. The world's greatest swordsman walks to the middle, to a body of the woman floating in the air. He caresses her face gently. Who is she? Asks Perona, flying closer. Zora lures and follows her. Someone who was dear to me, says Mihawk, turning around. But she's she's been dead for 13 years by now. See, we are dead. <laughs> We're not dead! Bro, he literally how just said flower, that. How would the flower we made still be alive when she herself says that the stuff from our power would dissipate if we died? I don't know. Voodoo? I, I don't know. I don't know. Could you be voodoo? I don't know. I don't know. It was One Piece. <laughs> one Keep Piece. Mm. She looks pretty much alive. Wonders Zoro, trying to poke her cheek. His teacher catches his hand, and his yellow eyes lock to his. Do you want me to break your finger, Roanora? Does it help with my learning? He asks, back to the sparkling eyes. Cut it out! Shouts Mihawk, pissed thinking that these two will kill all of his brain cells one day. She's just a memory now. A modified devil fruit that can't let go of its user. I don't get it, says Perona, turning her back in the air. The warlord sighs, running his hand over the flower that hangs from the ceiling. Her heart isn't beating. She isn't breathing either, he whispers. A course that keeps growing these plants in the room. Spreading flowers around her. She does even age, as I see. It's disturbing and beautiful at the same time. Death creates life. You killed her? Asks Zora carefully, and Mihawk tenses up. 
No, I gave her a place to rest, my library, because she loved when I read to her, read to her when she was only a child. A child? Stop, says the warlord. Don't disturb this room ever again. Locked doors stay locked. The younger pirates exchange a look. Then paint a red X on it or something. Cause, oh. <laughs> Cause this guy will definitely knock it down again. Says Perona, and Zoro grumbles loudly. See, wait. Keep, just keep going. <sighs> keep going. We gotta figure it out. Mihawk sighed. He rumbles something, catches the other man's shirt, and throws it out the room. Oh, and throws him out the room. The pink-haired woman gets the message and flies out too. The warlord stays alone for a few seconds, watching her peaceful face. Her wound healed by now, but you're not alive. Someday I'll regret, regret that I'll let this happen to you, Sylvia, but I understand why you did it. At that time, I didn't have enough part of... I didn't have that... Uh, I didn't have enough part in your life to do something. Anything. Tell you what to do. I'm so proud of you. I still care about you. And if you're not here anymore. And I hope you will forgive me for leaving you alone as a child. I'm not that man of the of the words. And then scroll. <laughs> but I won't let anyone disturb your rest, even if it means that I have to be the warlord forever to protect you. One more flower grows from the branch and is signed, and Mihawk smiles slightly. Even in your death, you remain precious. And he kisses her cold forehead gently, and leaves and locks the door of the library again. Present. That, that's, he gasps, reaching for it. Her voice echoes in his mind from so many years ago. It's a magic flower that blooms as long as I live. See? What I say. Mm -hmm. Well, he just explained that she's not even, like, her heart is not even beating. Is, that, wait, 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 hold up. That was, like, two years ago. <laughs> yeah, two years ago. Oh well, my! We God. don't know what's happened in two years. Yeah, it's now magic. 15 years, and now, she, and now she's magically better and walking in everything. <laughs> See, she truly is a fairy, laughs Hannah, caressing her necklace. I hope I'll, I hope I will have a daughter and she'll come back and, and make her one too. Vellante trembles and stands up. But will you let me hold on to it? Oh, will you let me hold it? He whispers. It's part of her. It's mine, protests the girl, and Waldy hisses to support her. Please, I will, I will give it back. Hannah and the cat look at each other, and she pouts and gives the flower to man. Just because you're her love, she mutters, grimacely slightly. Grimacing. They don't have the grimace. <laughs> and Corazon feels tears flowing in his face as he lifts the tiny thing to it, to the sunshine. It glows brightly to the light, rest, resting on his skin softly as, as her touch was. Petals warm as her body, fragrance like the scent of her hair. He carefully leaves a tiny kiss on the flower. Sylvia. So part of you is still alive. After this much time, did it wait for me to return? And the... Nen Nenifar? Nenifar blooms even more beautifully in his hand. His heart shakes, and a broken smile spreads on his painted lips. Rosadante strokes a golden petal and pulls it closer to his chest. I will never forget you. And somewhere over the seas, a young woman breathes for the first time and th There's I no shot! Did you just work! Hey, you some money! I'm not paying you! <laughs> paying. <laughs> this is <Close>. stupid! <laughs> no, it's not! It's beautiful! It's a fairy tale! The meadow and branches growing from her body let go and f falls to the ground to the embrace of flowers spreading across the room. The woman trembles as her heart beats again, touching, touched by a, a man from the other side of the world. What? There's no- him doing that brought her to- there's no fucking shot. <laughs> think about the fairies! Think about the book of the fairies! I'm thinking That's about the book it. of the fairies! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I will fight you. <laughs> I'm gonna fight you! <laughs> when she opens her eyes, everything changes. Her memories appear and she starts crying. She doesn't want to die anymore, no matter the reason. Returned to this world by the power of the devil fruit of living, 
She only wants to find happiness. Find uh, Rosa, Rosa Don, Quixote, Rosa Don Quixote, Rosa Dante. And Sylvia stands up. Her shaking legs grow stronger for in a few seconds. One moment she is running with bare feet, tiny plants growing from her footsteps. She doesn't care about her tears, about the subconscious smile on her lips. She just ran faster and faster towards the bright soul she that she ever knew. Just wait for me a little more. Keep my heart beating. We can't let it stop again. I'm on my way because I have something to share with you, Rosadante. I know the ending of our fairy tale. That was beautiful. <laughs> Bro! I, I really thought we were gonna die. Well, we died, and then we didn't, and things happened. We technically did, but we are, we're alive the whole time. Yeah. Not. Oh, no, we finished it. What am I gonna do with my life? Spin the wheel. <laughs> I guess so. Yay! Spin the wheel. <laughs> when Ao3 was down, I started reading their Kid X Killer, so I can't read that now. Damn. No, not Kid X <laughs> Killer. It's it's Kid X Reader. What I think Killer. I'm still I don't on know. that. Okay, here it is. All right, so that's I gone. <laughs> All right, you ready? <laughs> no. Good. <laughs> But I made a hat that's powered by sand. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow, we'll be, we're, we're just finishing books back to back because I think there's only two more chapters of this. Damn! Yay! Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still not over those beautiful 13 chapters. Ugh. <laughs> oh, you know, my heart is full. <laughs> Is it I, I now I can imagine like the whole after. You know what? Yeah, my heart is full of flowers. Um, <laughs> would not believe your eyes. Oh, never mind. We have like uh six chapters left. Let's go. How many did we read last time? We read four. Damn. Two, four. To be fair, like we that. were like oh, we were like really distracted. We were not prepared, <laughs> but now we are prepared. Yes. And we're, we'll be fine. Easy peasy. Yep. Um, you So, Jillian, I feel like I have to ask you this. What is your final verdict of this book? 10 out of 10. I will deduct point zero one point for Greenette. For what? I, for, for, I don't know. It's my personal pet peeve is when they do, like, the colors and then, like, et. As, like, uh, a descriptive term. Like the, like the brunette? Like, like, brunette... Is is fine, but when you started just incorporating other colors like Ravenette, Pinkette, Greenette, purple and orange, et. Scarlet. <laughs> that's not one, but <laughs> that's an actual word. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to. I was trying to make fun of the thing. Okay. Yeah. But I, yeah. I, no, that Vic was amazing. I do love. I, I love it. I loved it. Um, would definitely reread. I can see you rereading this. I'm gonna like go over and I'm like, hi Jolene, what are you doing today? And you're like, oh, uh, and you got like, you're uh, like rereading it for like the fourth I'm time. I'm like, oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh, damn. You know, I'm I'm satisfied with this. So if you all like to, I'm support, sad that we we won't be it again. <laughs> it's okay, bro. It's it's gonna be okay. You're <laughs> okay. If you would like to support the author, I'll have the the original book that we just read in the description. They make other cool things, like that, um, you just said they made a kid X-Reader, right? The, yeah, the yeah. kid X-Reader. And is, they have a law one, I think one it's too. still updating. Yeah, so you can- They have a law one, they have, uh, 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 do Flamingo, they have a King, <laughs> they have- did you say- did you bleh at King? No, I bleh King? at Doflamingo, bro. <laughs> Doflamingo oh, okay. sucks. I was gonna be- I was gonna be- I was, I Bro, you don't even know way. who King is! Bro, you're not even there! Look, he's pretty- he's pretty and that's all that matters. Oh my god, Jolene! I, I don't need to know his lore. Do you need to know the lore? <laughs> Look, I know a little more lore than you. Alright. Despite me not even being there. Well- Oh, but... wait. Hold what? up. What? I'm scared. What is this? I don't know. Oh, oh okay, never mind. Okay. I just saw an eight deck reader in my recommended. That's oh. all. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, on screen is the last Wattpad book club reading that I did with a with either Jolene or like a random guest, and on, and also is a playlist full of the other Wattpad book club readings that I've done f with since like I don't know last year. Holy shit, last year! <laughs> it's almost been a year of us, of us doing this. It actually, when I start March, I started in March. Mm -hmm. Like Wattpad book club, that was like oh, I meant like. March. I mean, like, me joining you. Oh, yeah, it, it's been a year, Daddy. <laughs> huh? What? Wait, you never seen that what audio? <laughs> no. It's like, Father, it's been a year, Daddy. I really, really miss you. <laughs> I, I will see if I can find it later. You, you must be looking at me like I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it through the computer screen. Oh my god, they have an ASEC reader. They have an ASEC reader, and they also have a shank <laughs> sex reader. Well, you know what you're reading. And I know what we're no, reading no, no. the next we, we one. Could, we can throw them on the wheel, we can throw them on the wheel. Let's go! Or else you can just read them privately, and you and you can be like, Dude, this is adequately busting, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> adequately busting, my lord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, my name is Phoenix, that was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye!